Number two of our naming ionic compounds, and this is the one where we have ionic compounds where the metal is what we call multivalent. These are the transition metals. Sometimes they like to have more than one charge. It all depends on what they're going to be reacting with. So this makes it tricky, but you just use the ones on your periodic table to help you figure out what these charges are. Okay, so these are the ones um, that are very common that we will use very um, frequently. And just write these um, optional, like write out all of these ions onto your periodic table so then you can refer back to them, okay? Copper could make a one plus charge and it might make a two plus charge. It really just depends. It depends on what it's gonna combine with because it always wants to be most stable. That's always the answer. People are like, why do they have more than one charge? It's like, well, they're big atoms. They're ones where the electrons don't really follow the natural rule that you've learned so far for making up Bohr Rutherford diagrams. It's more complex than what you've already than what you've learned. And so the answer, the easy answer is it's because it makes it more stable. Okay? So how is this similar and how is it different from what you've just learned about making ionic compounds? Well, similar. They are still metals and nonmetals coming together. So you're still making an ionic compound. You still put it together using the ionic charges that you've got. You just might need to look at the box on your periodic table to figure out what charges are possible for those metals, okay? So you can't use the group number because these are the ones all in between, so they don't follow the rule that you've learned for the first part. The third thing that makes them similar is you still use the crisscross rule, you still use the zero sum rule, and you still have to make a compound where the overall charge is zero. How do you put them together? What ratio do they come in? How is it different? It's different in that when you do the name for these ones, you actually put right in the name the charge that these metals have. So this is tricky a little bit because first of all, you need to be able to find it on the periodic table and then say, is this a metal that has more than one charge? And if it has more than one charge, then in the name, you actually have to put in Roman numerals the charge that's associated with the ion that's in that compound. So could you have copper, um, copper one, and used copper and chlorine together? Yes, then it would be CuCl. Could you have copper two coming together with chlorine? Yeah, but then it's going to be CuCl2. Now I can do that math in my head because it's, it's fairly easy for me now. Did you get that though? Can you make those ionic compounds? But what you would do is if copper is in the name of it, if it's CuCl, you're going to have to say Cu bracket one Cl. And if it's copper 2 chloride, you call it copper 2 chloride and you'd have to go copper, write it out, in brackets, put the Roman numeral 2, and then chloride. Okay, so can you see there, you're going to show using the um, Roman numerals, and if you don't know how to use your Roman numerals, you can have a look here, this is where you find them, to figure out which one it is. Okay, so here we go. You're making a compound. It says write the chemical name for a compound that is CuBr2. So again, this is now transition metals. I find copper on my periodic table and I realize that there are two options for the ionic charge. So I can't just call it copper bromide. If there are two charges, then I have to tell it what ion is it. Now, can you look at CuBr2, knowing that bromine is a, um, an, elect an ion that has a one plus charge? Can you do that math in your head? Can you work backwards to figure out what the charge of that copper must be to have a compound that CuBr2? Take a minute and just see if you can do that math in your head, okay? I know that the copper charge has to be a two plus charge because bromine is a one minus. And to have a compound that has a zero sum rule of zero, right? The sum has to be zero. I know that I need one thing with a two plus charge, two things with a one minus charge to validate that rule. Here's the math. If you need to show your work for that, which of course you always need to show your work, you're gonna write it out like this. So I know what the formula is and my task is to come up with the name. 
will also do the reverse of this where you're given the name and you have to do the formula. Okay, so here we go. C-U-B-R. I know that I've got um, one copper and I have two bromine. Where did I get that information? From the formula. Okay, the subscript, the numbers down below, tell me the ratio of those atoms. One copper, two bromine. That's what that means. So I have one copper and two bromines. So what am I solving for, right? I'm, it's like I put the X here because I don't know what the charge of the copper is. Is it a one plus charge or is it a two plus charge? There are two options. But I do know what the charge of bromine is. Um, it's a one minus charge, okay? Together they have to be zero. So can you figure that out? Does that make sense now that you need to have a two plus charge of copper? Because if this is plus two, and I have two things with a negative one charge, this is going to be negative two. What am I solving for? I'm solving for this number right here, and I'm trying to figure out what my ionic charge of copper is so that when I name the compound CuBr2, I'm going to call it copper. Notice there's no space between the copper and the ionic charge of the copper, which is two. That's the Roman numeral for it. And then I use my naming rule for the nonmetals, which stays the same, and it's not bromine. You take bromine, take off the ending, and add an IDE. Those are the two important things to think about when you're doing your naming, okay? Let's look at the next one. I did the answer already here, so it could be a little quicker, okay? The question says, write the chemical name of PbO2. So I know there's one lead, okay? And I know there's two oxygen, one lead, two oxygen. That's what those numbers would be if I were to show my math for this. How do I know that it's lead four? Because if I have two oxygens, each oxygen has a negative two charge and I have one lead, that lead has to have a charge of plus four. Plus four, minus four, the sum of those charges is equal to zero. So therefore, when I write my compound, it's lead four oxide. If you want to do the reverse, because then of course the next question will be, given the name, can you write the formula? Sure. Lead four plus, oxygen two minus, do the crisscross rule and reduce it and your compound is PBO and you've just proved the work that you've just solved for above. Okay, next one. Uh, the next option then, your second example is do the formula. So if I need to know the formula given the name of the compound and my compound is called iron 2 bromide, then it's like I work backwards. I have to figure out the ratio that these ions are going to come into play. Okay, how do you do that? Well, you would set it up like this, where it's you're trying to solve for how many of those ions, given the charges, are in your compound, okay? I already know, because it told me in the question that it's iron 2, therefore it's the iron with the 2 plus charge that's in that compound. Bromine is a 1 minus charge. Can you do this math in your head? Okay, what's the formula going to be? Crisscross rule if you want. Sure, that's the quick way to do it, right? Yeah, go for it. I know that they're going to come together in a ratio of one iron and two bromine. What's the math that shows that you know how, to under, how you understand this? It would look something like this, okay? Where you're trying to figure out how many two plus things and how many one minus things come together to give me an overall zero sum. Two plus two minus is gonna equal zero, so therefore I know that I need one of these and two of these, okay? That is naming ionic compounds for the first big part. Good luck. Let me know how it goes.